to get the perfect paw shot in food photography. What's up YouTube and welcome or welcome back to my channel. On this channel we talk about everything to do with food photography. So if that interests you, subscribe down below. Exciting news, I've actually got a new microphone this week. So hopefully it's a bit better because my old microphone was kind of going on the fritz a bit for the past few videos. So let me know in the comments below if it's sounding good. But enough about microphones, I'm gonna get into the video. So I'm sure you've seen really nice paw shots on Instagram. So that's an image with someone kind of having their hand pouring something in like syrup or milk or coffee, anything that can be poured. If you've been wondering how to get these sorts of shots or how to improve your own pour shots, then this video is gonna be really helpful because I'm gonna go through a few tips and things I think about when I'm planning my own pour shots. Pour shots are a really great way of adding a human element into your images. So this is a way to add story and interest to your food photography. So if you've not tried doing a pour shot yet, I would definitely recommend it. So one of the main things to think about when, we, when it comes to our pour shot is what we're pouring it out of. So obviously jugs have a nice lip and this lip helps it pour smoothly instead of sort of trickling down the edge. This is something we need to double check before we use it in a photo because you don't want to get everything prepared. Get your hand in to pour it and it trickles right down it and it just doesn't look right at all and you make a mess. This is especially common if what you're pouring is quite runny so maybe something more like milk. And that brings me to the second thing, so tip number two, and that is to think about the consistency of what you're pouring. So a lot of things like melted chocolate, it can be a bit too thick and stodgy to pour easily. So when I did this shot here, I added some hot water to the cho melted chocolate just to make it run a lot smoother and actually drip off the spoon. But it can work the other way if you maybe want something a bit thicker, you could add a sort of cornstarch and water mixture just to kind of thicken it up a little bit, just to get it to that perfect consistency so it looks right in photograph. So the next few tips are going to be about setting up for your posh shelf. And firstly, I want to talk about backgrounds. It's really important to consider the colour of the background, especially as most posh shots are straight on. So you need two backgrounds, like I discussed in last week's video. We need to consider the colour of the background because what you're pouring, you don't want it to sort of completely disappear into the background. So a dark, dark chocolate on a black or dark background is probably going to get a bit lost or icing sugar for this case. I did a little test with some icing sugar being sprinkled with a dark background and a light background. We want to make sure that what we're pouring really pops and stands out in our image. So with the icing sugar, it really stands out on the black background, but when I go to the lighter background, it gets completely lost and it's really hard to see. Obviously, we go through all of the effort of pouring or adding something like that into our scene. We need to make sure you can actually see it. So this syrup shot works really well. The gold really stands out against that light background. Now for lighting and setting up our lighting or where we're going to stand. No matter how you light your pour shot, you need to make sure you're considering exactly where you're standing. You don't want to be casting a shadow or blocking out any of the light with where you're standing in your image. So if you're lighting your scene from the right, don't stand right in front of the light on the right side to pour. It's just gonna be a big U-shaped shadow right in the middle of your image. If you've got your hand in, make sure your light isn't casting a shadow onto the subject because your hand's in there. The way I normally test this is just to do a fake pour. So kind of have my arm in the position that it's going to be, but with nothing in the jug. Take a picture and see if there's a shadow. If there is, either change where you're going to stand or maybe change the lighting slightly. But it's really good to get that sorted before we actually start pouring. That leads me into my next tip, which is to make sure we've got everything ready before we start pouring on our subject. So that's your lighting, your whole scene and props. Make sure it's all perfect. Make sure the only thing you want to change about that image is have something being poured on top of it or sprinkled on top of it. This includes the focus. Plan where you're 
pour is going to land, so for this I did it on top of some pancakes and blueberries. So I made sure I focused on those pancakes. So one, the camera's not having to do that for me, and two, it's not accidentally out of focus. So I get my pour shot and it's out of focus. It's really important to have everything planned ready before we start pouring things on it because you may only get one or two chances to take a picture while pouring. As soon as you've poured something or sprinkled something onto your subject, it's changed. So Unless you've got a bunch of pancake stacks ready to just be replaced, you want to make sure you get everything ready so we don't need to take our pour shot again. For example, I am doing pancakes and as soon as I've started pouring that syrup over, the pancakes start to soak in that syrup and you can see they kind of look a bit wet, the syrup doesn't look quite as fresh and I can't just keep pouring more syrup over because it's going to just end up in a pool of syrup at the bottom of the plate. So it's really good to make sure you don't want to change anything after you pour shot, so make sure you've planned everything out and it all looks perfect before we start pouring on our chocolate or syrup or whatever you're going for. So now for your shutter speed or flash speed. I use flash, so I'm going to talk about flash speed first, but I will also talk about shutter speed for those natural light photographers. The speed of our flash is what freezes the motion, and if you're just doing a pour shot, your flash is always going to be fast enough to freeze that pour action. However, with sugar sprinkles, if you don't have a high speed flash, like mine's not very high speed, it will sort of give a bit of motion blur on the sprinkles. If you feel you want to minimise that blur and you're using flash, you can try and turn the power of your flash down. This tends to make the flash a little bit quicker and to freeze a little bit more of the action in the image. Or vice versa, you can try turning it up, see how much of that motion blur you can get. Now for shutter speed, and this is the main difference we'll see here. If you are trying to freeze the sort of pour action, you want to be using about 1 over 200th of a second. This is going to really freeze that pour, which is going to be really handy, because if you, especially if you've got your hand in there, even if you try to keep it still, you're not going to be able to keep it perfectly still. Maybe maximum 1 over 100, but you're going to actually be pouring, so you're not going to be keeping it still. If you want to try and create some blur with the liquid, you want to be on about 1 over a tenth of a second. However, if you are doing this, I would recommend lift it higher so your hand isn't in the frame because this is going to give you kind of like a, a ghost hand, but if that's what you're going for, definitely look at it. But this will give sort of a dreamy effect to the liquid. My next tip for getting the perfect pour shot is to tether and use a remote. So for this shot, I used Capture One to tether my camera to my laptop, mainly because I use a Nikon and Nikon's tether software is not very good, wouldn't probably recommend it. If you have a Canon, I hear it is much better and I think you can tether now on Lightroom as well with LiveView. The reason that tethering is a really, really important thing when doing a pour shot is as you're standing to the side away from your camera to do the pour, you can actually physically see on a larger screen where your hand is and the best place to click that shutter. So I also use a remote app on my phone to control the mouse on my computer, which allows me to take the picture. There are other ways, like a click on a remote, but I quite like being able to control my computer from my phone. It makes it really simple. So what this allows you to do is see exactly the best place to click that shutter button and take the perfect pour shot. Another thing this helps with is perfecting your composition. It's really hard to just guess where your hand should be, put a self timer on, or even just click a remote without looking at the screen and get it in the right space. If you're trying to work towards a composition technique or maybe get it right in the middle, it's really helpful to be able to actually see that going on and not just guess. I've tried doing pour shots without tethering and I end up, I think my hand either ends up completely off the screen or to the side and it's quite hard to get it spot on. That's it for this week's video guys. I hope you find this helpful and if any of you do go out and try your own pour shots, I'd love to see what you guys create. So tag me on Instagram at amphotographeruk. Also, if there's anything you want me to talk about in a video, then let me know in the comments below because I'm definitely looking for some more video ideas. See you in the next video.